Hello and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. So in today's video, we are going to talk about pets, specifically the effect that pets had on the lives of famous composers and performers. We're gonna talk about how these pets helped these composers write music, sometimes very literally, and we're gonna talk about how they served as a source of inspiration. Most of these stories gave me a good laugh when I was researching them, so hopefully you will also find these at least vaguely amusing. And I did do some research in this and you know, some things can't be confirmed beyond like anecdotal lore, but if you think I've made any like massive errors, please let me know in the comments, as well as if you know like kind of a funny pet story about a famous composer or even about yourself, like leave it in the comments. Anyway, let's get started. So have you ever heard your cat jump across the keys of the piano and go like, that there is the start of a fabulous hit song. That doesn't happen to me either. It did, however, happen to Domenico Scarlatti, who was an Italian Baroque composer. His cat, Pulsinella, was actually the original creator of his fugue in G minor, which is also nicknamed the Cat's Fugue. So legend has it, she like walked on the keys and made a little tune that sounds something like this. So Pulsinella wrote the first six notes and then Scarlatti took that away and used that as the theme for the remainder of the fugue. If you're not properly inspired, unless you have multiple cats around you, you're not the only one. Apparently 18th century composer Antonio Sacchini once told his friends that he was only properly inspired to compose when he was surrounded by cats. Yep, surrounded. Not like, not like just like one or two cats, but like their cat posse. Their presence apparently inspired his seductive and gracious music. The next very famous composer on our list didn't actually have any cats, but instead he preferred to imitate them. And I'm referring to none other than the very famous Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who apparently when he got really bored during rehearsals, he would like start meowing and leaping over tables and stuff like that. I mean, Mozart's basically the dictionary definition of why we think musicians are eccentric. The next composer we're gonna talk about is also very famous. We're gonna talk about Frederick Chopin, who wrote a couple songs very specifically under the influence of pets. So his paramour, George Sand, had a little dog named Marquis. And the two of them were watching like Marquis being all cute, spinning around and chasing his tail. And George Sand was like, you know what? If I was talented at songwriting, I would totally write a song about Marquis chasing his tail, her tail, probably his tail. And Chopin was like, okay, sure, I'll definitely do that. And from there, we got the Minute Waltz, Opus 64, one of Chopin's most famous waltzes. And Chopin himself actually nicknamed it the Little Dog Waltz. George Sand didn't only have a dog. She also had a little cat, no, it might've been a big cat, named Valdeck. Just like Scarlatti's talented cat who like started and invented a song for Scarlatti, Valdeck actually gave Chopin some inspiration for his waltz in F major, opus 34. So if you listen to the beginning of the waltz, you kind of hear these like mashing keys that are like a cat who's like obnoxiously jumping on the piano. <laughs> Then about a minute into the song, there are these really cute little like bloop, bloop, bloop sounds of the right hand, which to me sound like, again, like a cat kind of like playfully walking down the piano being all cute. But if anyone on this list is going to win the award for Crazy Cat Late, Crazy Cat Man, it is going to be Maurice Ravel. We don't actually know how many cats he had, but the fact that we have to ask that question means that the answer is probably a lot. I mean, for example, what we do know is that at one point in his life, he shared a house with a Siamese cat family. Ravel did normal cat people things, like he let his cats hang out on his work desk, he played with his cats, he wrote long detailed stories to his friends about like the daily lives of his cats, like those kinds of things. Kind of things. But Ravel took it a step further and he actually communicated with his cats. Like he knew how to how to meow and they could listen to him and he could listen to them. He like, he spoke cat ease. This cat communication, also known as meowing, made its way into Ravel's music as well. He wrote an opera called L'Enfant et les Sortilégés. 
which actually had a really interesting premise. It's basically about a little boy who's a huge jerk and he disrespects his belongings, but then all of a sudden his belongings can talk and the animals can talk and stuff like that. So that's where you get the meow duet, the duo meow. And it's a duet for male and female. They're, they're cats and they're basically just meowing. It's awesome. I'll show you a little clip of it. Another French Impressionist composer who was very fond of cats was Claude Debussy. But unlike Ravel, who favored the Siamese cats, Debussy only liked the long-haired Angora cats. Fun fact is apparently all of Debussy's cats had the same name. So, and it, they like passed it along to each other like a family lineage. So anytime like a cat died, the new cat would be reborn with the same name. But it was driving me crazy when I was researching it because I could not find the name of this cat. So if you know the name of Debussy's cat slash cats, please tell me. I'd love to know. Debussy, like Ravel, was also really generous in the permissions he allowed his cat. His cat was allowed to wander around his workspace as well as being able to sew disorder amongst the pencils. But I don't think Debussy had a knack for cat communication. I looked really, really hard to find composers who had interesting stories about dogs, and thankfully I found Richard Wagner, who was a big fan of dogs. And there's actually tons of stories online about, especially about his two dogs named Russ and Koss. Now, the fun story about Koss, which kind of shows you how Wagner was as a human, Koss was a terrier and he was like feeling frisky and there was another terrier and they started battling and they weren't just like battling in a field, they were battling on a train track and then there was a train coming, it was basically like a movie and Wagner's like, that's my dog and he like went in there and he saved his dog in the nick of time and you know, just awesome story. The other dog, Russ, wasn't a terrier. He was a Newfoundland dog, like a big giant dog. And he didn't help Wagner write music, but he was more of like a companion who chilled out while Wagner was writing. And this was a dog who like loved to get dirty. And he was always like dragging dirt in the house. And Wagner's wife was like, curse you dog. And she wanted to send the dog to sleep outside. But Wagner was like, nah, -uh. if the dog sleeps outside, I'm sleeping outside. And our last pet story is actually our most modern. It is brought to you by Glenn Gould, who's a pretty famous Canadian performer. Some people will say like, I'm a dog person or I'm a cat person or whatever, but I think it's fairly safe to say that Glenn Gould was like overall just an animal person. At the age of six, apparently he's quoted of saying that he discovered he got along much better with animals than he did humans. And this is where we get our cow story. So Glenn Gould really likes singing to cows when he was a kid. His dad recalls a time when they were at the cottage and Glenn Gould just like took off on his bike somewhere and his dad went to go find him only to see that he'd been singing like Mahler to a herd of cows who were like gathered around at a fence to listen to him sing. Apparently Gould himself said, I really felt that a special bond had been established. Certainly I've never encountered such attentive of an audience before. And that is all for today's video on pets and the impact that pets have had on the lives of famous composers. Hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as I had fun kind of like reading these stories. And if you think that you know someone who might have a laugh from watching this video, share it with them. And that concludes today's video on pets and the impact that pets have had on the lives of famous composers. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and then we can all have a chuckle together. Thank you so much. Give it a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you next time. Oh, so cute, you love me. <laughs> she doesn't love me. She, well, she loves me when I feed her.